La Ronde is one of the rare parks in the Six Flags chain that isn't branded as one. Located in Montreal at the base of the Jacques Cartier Bridge, this theme park often gets a lot of flack in the coaster community, but I think this park actually has a solid ride lineup. Not only do you have 8 different roller coasters including a B&M Hyper, but you also have a unique collection of flat rides and some nice observation rides. So in this video, I will rank this Canadian park's top 15 rides and attractions. Before starting the list, I want to note a few rides that will not be included on the list. First, I dislike a lot of Acoma SLCs, and Edner is among the worst. This ride will bash your skull mercilessly. Second, I usually like Frisbee rides, but Manitou is one of the worst ones I've experienced. This ride barely swings past 30 degrees, and it fails to offer any airtime or thrills. It is an embarrassment to the genre. Third, I have not tried any of the upcharge attractions at this park like the Slingshot or the Catapult Sky Coaster. Fourth, Damon is a unique Mondial topspin, but it has been closed in both my visits due to mechanical issues, and I suspect this ride would have made the list had it been operational. Number 15, Gravitor. Chance falling stars are pretty rare nowadays, but Laron still has one. This one isn't the fastest, so you won't get any airtime, but you do get some solid laterals in each revolution. Number 14, Phoenix. This set of Larson flying scooters cannot really be snapped, but they do have a decent operating speed and you get a nice breeze. Plus, this one has some nice visuals with a bustling midway nearby and the backdrop to the bleachers nearby. Number 13, Splash. This intimate shoot the shoots has a simple but effective layout. You have a zippy plunge that produces a giant wave that will soak riders from head to toe. Number 12, Mini Rail. One of a few observation rides in this list, this monorail runs through the entirety of the park. You get some nice views of all the park's coasters as you circle around the lake. Number 11, Boomerang. This Vacoma Boomerang is one of the few that operates with an arrow train, so it unfortunately tends to run a little rougher than the others. Thankfully, my head clears the top of the over-the-shoulder restraints, so head banging isn't a major issue for me. It can for smaller riders. This allows me to appreciate the forceful inversions going both directions, and the initial plunge is a nice thrill too as you zoom towards the station. Number 10, Toboggan Nordique. This Samperla Wild Mouse has downright awful capacity, and the drops are too shallow to offer any airtime. But the ride does offer some solid laterals on the sharp turns, that's the main reason to experience this attraction in my opinion. Number 9, Vertigo. This Samperla Hawk is oddly located in a pit in the ground, but the ride is otherwise similar to the other ones out there. You rotate relatively slowly, so while you don't get too many positive forces, you do get some sweet hang time going over the top. Number 8, Dragon. This indoor Intamin coaster is quite smooth but tame. Forget about any airtime positives or laterals. What this ride does do is it has some fun visuals between the lighting effects and the large dragons you pass. You even get eaten by one towards the end of the ride. Number 7, Vol Ultim. This Funtime Starflyer stands 15 stories tall, allowing it to offer some nice 360 degree bird's eye views of the park in Montreal. And those visuals are paired with some moderate force as you spin through the air. Number 6, Grand Rue. This Facoma Ferris wheel is one of the best ones out there. It's about as tall as the previous ride in this list. This allows you to get some stunning views of the park's coasters and the Montreal skyline. I think it's better than the Ferris wheel in downtown Montreal to be honest. I place this above the Star Flyer because you can appreciate the views at a more leisurely rate and also take photos along the way of the coasters. It's worth knowing that Spiral, the observation tower, likely would have made the list as well but I think it has been standing but not operating for years at this point. Who knows if it'll even reopen. Number 5, Monst. This dual-tracked cob wooden roller coaster is immense size, but it is a flawed experience. For one, it can no longer race or duel. This takes away the interaction it used to have. Two, while the ride is 131 feet or 40 meters tall, it crawls through much of the course. You slowly meander through these high turns and helixes, the slow speeds lead to some weird lateral hang time at points, and then one or two of the turns actually give some bona fide laterals for a change. Most of the ride is free of airtime, but there is this awesome speed hill on the right side that forcefully pops you out of your seat. 
Then you also have a boatload of head choppers. I was fearful this wonky layout would be painful, but the ride is actually tolerable, and you'll even see some RMC topper track towards the start of the ride. Now this ride is awkward, but I always have a good laugh on it. Up next would have been Super Menage. This Facoma coaster was removed a few years ago. I always heard it was rough, but I got a decent ride on it. I didn't encounter any head banging, and the layout had a few nice pops of airtime towards the back of the train, along with those two dizzying corkscrews. Number 4, Orbit. This SNS space shot is located on its own little island in the center of the lake, and this one runs much differently than the other ones. The launch sound and timing is different, which catches me off guard. While the launch isn't too powerful, the airtime at the top sure is. You shoot maybe three quarters of the way up the tower, then you suddenly stop and are blasted back down. This maneuver causes some great sustained ejector airtime, far stronger than most SNS drop towers. The only other SNS space shots matching the sensation are the ones at Worlds of Fun and the Stratosphere Tower. And this airtime is paired with a sweet view of the park and city. Number 3, Teton. This Zamperla Giant Discovery is a really good frisbee ride, unlike the aforementioned Manitou. This one has a long warm up and cool down time, but the max swings are glorious. You get sustained floater airtime along with some wonderful visuals of the water down below, the park, and Montreal. Then the downswings offer immense speed and some nice positive G's to contrast. This one didn't seem to have as many max swings as the other large ones on the Six Flags chain, but it is still the park's best flat ride for the thrills it does offer. Number 2, Vampire. This Balger Mabyard Invert is one of the many Batman the Ride clones out there, but this one seems to run noticeably faster than most. This one rips through the layout amplifying an already intense ride. You are viciously whipped through all five inversions, and the positive G's in the valleys and turns are unbelievable. I came off this ride with my legs tingling and my head spinning. And even after two decades of operation, this ride is extremely smooth, just like a B&M should be. And coming in at number one is Goliath. This mini B&M Hyper has a vanilla layout. It is a slender out-and-back coaster with a never-ending series of camelbacks. But for me, that's no issue. I love sustained floater airtime, and this is one of the best coasters in the world for that. Every single camelback in Bunny Hill levitates you out of your seat for several seconds. There are some B&M hypers that may offer stronger airtime, but few can match the quantity of Goliath. And this ride mixes in some tricks on the far turnaround and bank Bunny Hills because you get some good laterals while also hovering out of your seat. This ride is also super smooth and it offers one of the best views in the park. I have a separate view in this coaster, but it is the clear star at La Ronde, and it's one of the best B&M hypers without a doubt. So those are the top 15 rides and attractions at La Ronde. What are your thoughts on the rides at Canada's only Six Flags Park? Do you agree Goliath is the best ride here? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.